Hello, we have a special treat here today. Uh, we are sitting with uh, Dr. Maureen Hansen, uh, a member of our Research Advisory Council, a professor at uh, Cornell University and the head of the new uh, Collaborative Research Center that is uh, announced recently by the NIH. So Maureen, welcome. Thank you. Um, you just came, flew all the way. That's to right. Be, to be at that meeting. So thank you. We just stepped off the plane. Right. So thank you, Maureen, for uh, this is really a chat, uh, the two of us, mm. to discuss and assess succinctly the recent changes in the landscape, also mm. knowing about you a little bit, what brought you to the MECFS world, um, and how do you see the uh, future and the trajectory? of MECFS research. So let's start. I, I would like to know more about what, what brought you to MECFS. You are one of the major um, scientists in the field, in the space, and a lot of people look at you for leadership mm -hmm. and for mentorship of the new generation of scientists in the field. So what, uh, what started that for you, Maureen? Set, set that us. Well, uh, I routinely went to the IACFSME meetings and when I was there I realized that there are actually rather few molecular biologists who attend those meetings or did any research uh, on the disease and I felt this was a gap. So uh, that's what stimulated me to start working on uh, MECFS, that I felt I could bring my molecular biology expertise into the field. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's clearly been transformative. You have published recently some of the key papers in the field on the microbiome, dysbiosis, and the changes. And you have been the recipient of the Collaborative Research Center recently, uh, one of the three collaborative research centers one at Cornell that you had, mm -hmm. uh, as well as one at Columbia headed by Ian Lipkin, Dr. Ian Lipkin, and another one at the Jackson uh, by Dr. Uh, Daria Onimtaz, as well as one at DMCC, Data Management and Coordinating mm -hmm. Center, uh, headed by uh, Dr. Williams of RTI International. Now, right. we happen to be collaborators on many of these. Mm -hmm. what, how do you see the role of these centers going forward as one of the leaders mm -hmm. in the space? Well, I do think that the centers, uh, because they're going to be collaborative, have a, a chance to do some value-added work because we can exchange ideas and materials that should allow more rapid progress. But uh, in, in addition to the centers, though, there's still a lot of very important research going on, out on outside the centers uh, that hopefully uh, will continue and um, maybe we can... Uh, interact with yeah. many of those other groups that are uh, that have grants or funding uh, to uh, do research on MECFS. Absolutely, absolutely. Do, do you think this step by the NIH uh, will give additional legitimacy to our to our disease space? Would that have a psychological effect as well, internationally? I I, I definitely think that's the case. It certainly brings more attention to the illness. Uh, in it, uh, it's been quite a while since there were centers in, in MECFS. There were some long time ago, but this is the biggest effort that uh, NIH has made, and along with their own intramural program uh, research, I think the combination of our centers and the intramural program, plus the hopefully increasing number of really good proposals and projects from outside uh, the centers and the intramural program will also stimulate a lot of research. That's great. And the intramural study, you are referring to the clinical study at, on the ground of the NIH. That's uh, right. The intramural That's study right. that was launched earlier this year. Right, right. And recruiting patients and, and all of that. Right. Um, Maureen and uh, Dr. Hansen, you are on our research advisory council. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot. We collaborate. Uh, you review grants for our uh, seed grant mechanism. So tell us a little bit about what uh, brought you to work with SMCI in that fashion, in that capacity. We sought you out, of mm -hmm. course, because of your expertise and, and talent, but how that has been for you so far? Well, I was certainly very grateful to your organization to uh, uh, write a support letter for our uh, central proposal and uh, agree to uh, be part of our uh, patient caregiver advocate committee. Uh, a part of the uh, center's mandate is to do outreach with the patients and, of course, help with physician education. 
So um, given that your organization is a very important advocacy organization, uh, that, that was really uh, very yeah, important for us. And that's something why, that's one reason you know, why I am very glad to be invited to be on your advisory board. Thank you, Maureen. We are so thrilled as, as well. We uh, also have collaborated on a few things through Metabolon work, uh, yes. through uh, high throughput technology uh, work that we are doing with you and we are supporting some of your work. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that also, uh, these metabolomics and lipidomics? We are, as you know, a, a research and advocacy organization, a disease organization that does a variety of things. Mm -hmm including supporting research, trying to fill knowledge gaps, and also encouraging participatory research and doing advocacy with the CDC, with the NIH, yeah. on the Hill. How, how any, anything coming up uh, from, from this exciting work? Yeah, well, we were very grateful to receive funding that allowed us to take some of our existing samples and have Metabolon do, uh, do their metabolomics platform on those samples. We did not, uh, at the time, have any NIH funding for doing metabolomics, and in fact, had only been able to publish a very small, a very small pilot study from using internal funding. This allowed us to uh, analyze a lot more samples than in that initial pilot, and we are actually working on writing up that work for publication. That's wonderful. And I will be presenting that at, yes. at this meeting. That's wonderful. Uh, some some of that work, and it it's very instructive for the. Uh, work that will be done as part of the center because we are going to be doing metabolomics in the center and having that pilot data that tells us uh, information about how to actually do the experiment is very critical. We'll be able to do better, uh, better experiments as a result of the that's, pilot study. That's wonderful, Maureen. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why we are here. Mm -hmm. That's why we are trying to support and initiate yeah. research work on all fronts. Mm -hmm. The meeting that you are referring to is this discovery forum that we are right. putting together with uh, really thought leaders and key mm -hmm. opinion leaders in the space. Mm -hmm. You are one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is our second year, so we are very excited about the type and quality and, and, and seriousness mm -hmm. of the people that are coming together tomorrow. And so it so happens that the four leaders of the centers mm -hmm. are also going to be in the room as well as representatives from the CDC and from the NIH and from the biotech industry. So we, we hope that you will enjoy mm -hmm. that meeting mm -hmm. and that the proceedings will um, help to educate the public and mm -hmm. to drive more collaborations mm -hmm. and cross-pollinations amongst the participants. So right. we, we, you know, we appreciate you, you coming on and being part of our family. And um, one last thing, tell us about the center at Cornell that you started uh, last year, the Center for? Uh, Innervating Neuroimmune Disease. Uh, th that, that's the name of the disease that a patient suggested. Uh, and I thought it was actually quite an excellent name. It, as, as you know, we don't really have a uh, name settled upon, whether it's myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, or systemic exertion intolerance disease. Uh, there are issues with all three of those names. So a patient came up with this, this name, and I, I rather like it. So we started the uh, center last year, and uh, that allowed us to have a platform to uh, begin uh, thinking about uh, submitting research grants and uh, then the new NIH uh, MECFS Collaborative Research Center will be under the auspices of, the, of, of, of this center, which we call the ENID Center. Uh, so um, we've been able to bring together the uh, Cornell Ithaca campus where I'm located and the uh, Cornell Medical School, while Cornell Medicine as it's called, Ithaca College is also participating, as well as the Boyce Thompson Institute, which is on the Ithaca campus. And we have a number of clinicians uh, involved, including one who's in Los Angeles, and that allowed me to have some visits with you yeah. while I uh, visited his office to discuss uh, our potential project that we're going to be doing. And uh, we will be recruiting patients in Los Angeles as well as in New York City and uh, in, uh, in Ithaca, of course, uh, who can participate in our studies as part of the That's center. Wonderful.
Sure. That's wonderful. It's, it's always to our benefit when you come to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. We are located in Los Angeles. We are mm -hmm. a, the, the headquarters of our organization is in Los Angeles. So Ma Maureen, any, anything you'd like to add? Uh, what uh, maybe perhaps the challenges that you will face in the next few years? What, uh, what's your outlook on, on the you know, research space mm -hmm. in the next few years? What do you... Uh, well, I think it's very important uh, for these centers not to be the last thing that NIH does yeah. to support the uh, MECFS research uh, area. We need, uh, in addition, fellowships for graduate students, MDs, postdocs, uh, who will then be encouraged to move into this area. But, but uh, budding scientists are not going to be encouraged to move into this area unless they see that there's a, a path to obtain grant funds when they get out on their own. So I, I think it's also going to be very important to have more requests for applications mm -hmm. from NIH for ordinary grants, uh, regular R21s and R01s, in order f for uh, this field to really grow and for young people to get interested in uh, this as a career area. Yeah. Absolutely, and so the nuance here is that uh, junior investigators, they are given yeah. startup packages, but right. they are expected eventually to support themselves right. and their research right. from independent sources, and what they mean by that typically That's is right. the NIH, yeah. uh, through exploratory grants or investigator-initiated awards, R21, R1, right. and that's, uh, that's an essential that's component. Right. You know, after uh, HIV was discovered, uh, NIH made a, uh, available a lot of funds for studying HIV AIDS, and that was very critical to grow the research uh, community that works on HIV AIDS. And how, here we are now today uh, with, you know, many good therapies for HIV AIDS. Uh, even though we don't have a cure, uh, the individuals who have the disease have been greatly helped by all of the research that's gone into that. And uh, we need something similar for MECFS. It, it affects even more people than uh, people with HIV. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, progress will be made relatively quickly and that that will actually stimulate even more uh, attention from NIH and other granting agencies, as well as we certainly still need support from private organizations Absolutely. and individuals. Absolutely. Well, Maureen, thank you so much for uh, gracing us today with your presence. <laughs> I know you must be very tired flying all over the, the and you are going to Sweden soon yes. after this for another round table mm -hmm. uh, conference in, right. in Sweden. So we will you know, probably will see you on the other side as well. I will be there yes. too. Uh, thank you so much for uh, doing this. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Maureen, you are not only a, an accomplished, award-winning scientist, uh, a molecular biologist, and a professor, but mm. you have a relationship to the disease, a personal relationship mm. to the disease. I know uh, this is something difficult to talk about sometimes, mm. and you are often chary to uh, come out with this personal uh, because you wish not to interfere with your professional uh, determination mm. about the disease. but. Mm. Would you, would you mind shedding light on some aspects of that? Mm. Because this must be difficult for you. Yeah. So um, I started going to meetings of, sponsored by the IACFSME organization uh, some years ago. And the reason I was attending those meetings is that my own son had been diagnosed with MECFS when he was 15 by one of the leading physicians in the area, uh, uh, Dr. David Bell. And so I started going to those meetings. Since I was a scientist, uh, I knew that I would get a lot out of them. And what I did learn at those meetings was that there weren't enough molecular biologists. So that's how I got into the field. I certainly hope that my n intimate knowledge of what the experience of an MECFS patient will actually inform our work. So I, I feel that um, I, I, all of that knowledge I have of patient symptoms and you know, what happens to them yes. in their lives is very important. It also does mean that when patients call me up, as some have after this center uh, has, uh, was announced, I've had a number of patients call me up, tell me about their symptoms and how desperate they are for some treatment. Yes. I certainly can relate to Absolutely. the importance of uh, patient education, physician education, and uh, relate to their, their desperation, really. Many of them feel... Uh, 
very abandoned by the uh, medical community, and I certainly hope our medical education can also uh, help the condition. Even just educating physicians about the disease may improve the lives of a number of our uh, victims of this disease. Absolutely. Th thank you. Thank you, Maureen, for uh, mentioning that. It mm -hmm. must be very difficult for you, and we, we wish your son uh, all the health in the world. And, and again, thank you mm -hmm. for doing what you are doing. This is uh, not only professional for you, it mm -hmm. seems it's personal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I think together, hopefully, we can, we can achieve putting this disease behind us and bringing some relief uh, and treatment, if not cures. Uh, to your son and to uh, hundreds of thousands suffering like him. That's so right. Please yeah. give him our best. So, uh, Dr. Hansen, you uh, are part of our research advisory council, mm -hmm. which is uh, essentially a medical and scientific advisory mm -hmm. board, and we collaborate on so many projects. Um, and you have been part of our family. What uh, What really uh, made you take the decision? to be on our research advisory council. We invited you, of course, for your mm -hmm. talent and presence and, and uh, poise in the field. But uh, tell us from your perspective, how do you see our organization and our role mm -hmm. that we are playing in, in advancing the plight of patients? Well, the fact that you're providing research grants is a very important uh, aspect of your organization because uh, there needs to be some seed money to uh, test you know, new ideas. And so uh, I felt if I can help uh, with review of grants for such uh, seed projects, uh, that that would be uh, a, a useful uh, uh, investment of my time. Uh, I also was grateful for your support of our center proposal and your willingness to be involved with our center going forward, uh, in that uh, you also have a lot of advocacy uh, efforts. You make things like this video uh, that is informative for the patients, and uh, we also look, you know, forward in our center to continuing Absolutely. to to interact with you in that realm as well. Absolutely, and thank you so much. And just for the record, uh, Maureen, Dr. Hansen has reviewed grants for this cycle mm -hmm. and for the previous cycle, and she has always been a grateful, a gracious to us. Um, we uh, launched five projects last year from the UK to Australia to Germany to the United States mm -hmm. and this year also through the new program we are going to mm -hmm. Ramsey program we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have exciting projects as you know Maureen from mm -hmm. Sweden to Israel to Germany to the United right. States to the UK mm -hmm. again so we are so grateful for your um, uh, unpaid participation <laughs> I must say mm -hmm. you're volunteering your time mm -hmm. and you are very busy so we are very grateful mm. to you being uh, part of us, part of our Research Advisory Council. Mm. And we wish you all the best um, in your endeavor. Mm. And uh, hopefully we, we can put this disease behind us in a very short period of time. I'm sure that's everyone's goal. Absolutely. Yes.